forward. Okay. okay, so this is Sue Moulton, your advanced director, and I just want to kind of give you a general outline of what a show would look like if you're doing a live cooking show, whether it's a, vert, um, a station style or I call it Rachel Ray, which is what I do. So as a new consultant, you wanna show up somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour before to get set up. So um, depending upon who your hostess is, you wanna be there early enough to um, use on the kitchen table. I typically do most of my shows around a kitchen table and I stand at one portion of the kitchen table, whether it's at the head or the side, it doesn't matter. Um, you just want people to be around you and they can either sit down or stand. Um, if there's an island where the kitchen table looks towards the island, I might be at the island where I have four people sitting at the island and then all the kitchen tables facing me. So it really just depends on the layout of the kitchen. But you want people to be able to see and actually be able to participate. So if it's a recipe where um, there's a lot of different tools involved, I might go around and sit um, cutting mats all the way around the kitchen table. And I might put the garlic press um, on one mat and I might put the quick slice on another mat and the manual food processor on another and a knife on another. And depending upon what the recipe is, um, when people go and sit down, they're in front of a tool. And so one of the easiest ways to begin your show after you thank the host. I want to thank you all for having me, you know, thank Tammy here for having me at her show. I really appreciate you coming out and supporting Tammy as a hostess and me as uh, your Pampered Chef consultant. My name is, you know, Sue Moulton. I've been doing Pampered Chef for 15 years. I hope that you'll consider me your Pampered Chef consultant for life. I want you to watch what I do here tonight and picture yourself in my shoes because this month we have a special promotion where you can earn 50% back on a, any one of our three kits. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But if you've ever thought about earning some extra income or having a debt-free holiday, you should consider Pampered Chef as an option. So tonight we're gonna be making, and then you announce your recipe. Um, if I'm doing something that has multiple tools, um, I will, as I said, have everybody sit in front of the tools. And um, then when we get to that stage of the recipe, um, I would have them use the tool that is in front of them. If it's something that needs um, instructions like the simple slicer or something like that, I would definitely talk about it and show them how to do it first. So um, one of the things that I do at the beginning of my show is I always say, all right, we're gonna have a door prize at the end of this show and you're gonna get points or tickets, however you wanna do it, into the drawing. Um, I need some volunteers tonight, so I need to know, do you uh, want to volunteer or would you like to be voluntold? Because either way, I need four helpers tonight. So when that happens, I would like for you to um, turn to the hostess if nobody volunteers right away and say, who do you think we should voluntold first? And so if she says, um, oh, I think Sarah would be great at this, you'd say, great, Sarah, thanks so much for volunteering. And then everybody laughs and you're going to hand her the recipe and you're going to say, you're my recipe reader tonight because heaven forbid, I cannot cook and talk at the same time. So when I need to know what I'm doing, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, all right, um, let me know what the next step is. And then I raise my hand and I go, all right, anybody else want to volunteer for 10 points or do you want to get voluntold for five? And then usually somebody will raise their hand and I say, great, your job is going to be the host special announcement. So you are going to hand the, the host special flyer, I put it in a clear page protector so that I can use it show after show after show and it doesn't get food on it. And I, I tell her that she's gonna be like Vanna. So you need to three times during your show announce the host special for this month. So if um, you don't know what the host special is, I'm gonna just pull it up for you um, and I will screen share. So the host special for October is select any one of these four items for 60% off. So I would say to my hostess uh, or, or that person who's doing the announcement, you're going to be like Vanna. So you're going to say, ladies, when you have Sue at your house to have a wine, cheese, and chocolate or a fresh and healthy show, you can get the 12-inch nonstick stainless steel skillet instead of $210 for only $84. Um, and so you example that to the person who is doing the announcement. So you're going to pick one of these and you're going to say exactly what I just said. And then you're going to hand her the sheet and you're going to say, so you get to pick any of the other three during your three times that you're going to announce this. 
And so you're just going to be like Vanna and make sure that you let them know how much that they can get when they have me um, come to their home. So it can be a live or a virtual party. Then you are going to hand the October guest special to somebody and you're going to say, okay, thank you so much for volunteering. You get 10 tickets into the door prize. Keep track on your order form or on your door prize slip. And you're going to say, your job is to say, oh, and when you purchase $75 or more, you get one of these lovely spatulas for free. You can choose the mini spatula, the large spatula, or the slice and serve. And just be silly, show it to them and say, however, you know, the more like Vanna you want to be, the more funny you are, I promise I'll give you more points. And if they do it and they do a really good job, I just throw out extra points if they're like, you know, if they get dynamic, I'm like, excellent. Don't you think she deserves an extra five points? I think she deserves an extra five points. So she gets points for doing that. Then you're going to do the October new consultant um, rebate. So in October of 2018, our promotion is you get a 50% kit rebate on all three of the kits after they um, qualify $1,250 in their first 30 days. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna hand this to somebody and this is what I say. I say you have the job that's the most fun because you get to watch what I do and every time I make a mistake, you're gonna say, and you too could be a Pampered Chef consultant and you get half price on your kit rebate on, in October. And so I just say to them, you know, you can just look at any of the kits and you can just let them know. They can get $1,000 worth of products for only $124.50. They can get $650 in products for $79.50, or they can get $450 for just $54.50. So host special announcer, guest special announcer, recipe reader, and promotion for recruiting. So you have four people that are helping you during the show. Then you're gonna say, okay, great, I'm just gonna go wash my hands and we're gonna get started. Why don't you guys grab yourself a drink and we'll, gather around the table again. Everybody refills their wine, whatever they're drinking, they come back to the table, you've washed your hands, and then you turn to the recipe reader and you say, recipe reader, what's the first step? And she's gonna say, preheat the oven to 450 or whatever. And you're gonna either do it or you're gonna ask the hostess to do it. And then you're gonna go, great, recipe reader, what's the next step? And she's gonna say, you know, measure out a quarter or add the applesauce to the blah, blah, blah. So now, when you first set up your show, you already know what you need to do. So I recommend all of your measurements are already done. You put your applesauce in your measure all cup. You put your apple cider in your um, easy read mixing cup. Or um, you have your measuring spoon out next to your baking soda or your baking powder. So you know exactly which tool goes with which thing. And you have it all laid out on the table so that every tool, if you are slicing mushrooms, your quick slice is next to the mushrooms. If you're doing, you know, all of the tools and all of the food are already on the table when the guests get there. So you are ready to roll. So when the recipe reader tells you what to do, you literally pick that up and do it. Now, if your recipe calls for, like I do the Greek cucumbers um, spiralized salad all the time, that uses three cucumbers that you spiralize. So you could do one of two things. You could, after you demonstrate how it works, I cut all of my cucumbers to four inches so that they'll fit on the spiralizer. And then I ask people, would you like to come up and spiralize? And so I, who have had clean washed hands, put the cucumber on the spiralizer. They just fold the spiralizer and twirl it down. And I call them up to use that. If you don't think that you're going to get a lot of interaction from the guests, you can just spiralize most of it and just have a cucumber left. There's recipes that you're spiralizing a sweet potato and you're spiralizing something else. They don't need to see the spiralizer doing four different vegetables, okay? So you can get most of it done in advance before the guests arrive and just demo the product. The purpose is we're demoing the product unless you're doing a station style show, which is to get them using the products, okay? I often will call people up and say, if you would like to come on up and, um, and use one of the tools while I'm doing it, you're gonna get an extra five points. So I'll demonstrate how to use the spiralizer and then I'll say, who here wants to come up and use the spiralizer? If your show doesn't use a tool that's like that, like Tammy's doing a donut recipe, you might say, all right, is there anybody that would like to get five points into the door prize to whisk up the blah, blah, blah? And if somebody's like, sure, I'll whisk it up, then they're whisking it up. 
when you are whisking, chopping, dicing, and you've already talked about the tool that you're using. So if you've talked about your knife, but you still need to cut up extra products with the knife, people are going to get bored. There's going to be a lot of dead air space. The most important thing that a new consultant can do at that point is get the conversation going. And I always use the, so let's start over here. Tell me, how do you know Tammy, our hostess, and what your favorite Pampered Chef product is? Hi, my name is Sally, and Tammy and I go to church together, and I love my food chopper. Oh my gosh, I do too. Tell everybody what you chop in it, what you cook in it, what you've made recently in it. You're asking them to expound on why they love their tool. Now, we're hoping that we're going to get people that are going to pick tools like cookware and knives and things like that. A lot of people might say that they love their mini spatula, which I do too, but it's a $4 item. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn to the person who has the special announcer that that item is free and we're going to look like deer in headlights. I always go, and they go, oh, 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 and you can get that free for $75 purchase today. And I go, good job, an extra point for you. Um, so just... And if they use something that's, you know, citrus peeler, $1.25. Oh, that's a great tool. I agree. Okay, next. Who's next to you? Heather. Okay, Heather, tell us how you know Tammy, our hostess. Once you're done chopping your vegetables and you've gotten that part done, you need to then um, say, okay, we'll, we'll get back to you, Sandra, and in just a second, let me just tell you what's next in this. Recipe reader, what do we do next? Recipe reader tells you, you go back to your recipe, Okay. When dead air space comes again, you go, all right, Sandra, I think we left off at you. Tell us, how do you know Tammy, our hostess, and what your favorite Pampered Chef product is? So that is your filler throughout the show when you get dead air space and it feels very awkward because there's always times like that. Your recipe gets assembled. You're going to talk about your tools. You hopefully are doing a recipe that uses power tools, but not all of our recipes do that. There are certain times where you're doing a wine, cheese, and chocolate or a kid-friendly show or a show where the hostess has requested a specific recipe like mini bun cakes or like the donut pear pan. That's totally fine. Once those are in the oven, that is your opportunity. You have about 12 minutes probably where you can highlight the um, power tools. So our power tools are things like our knives, our cookware, our rock crocks, our quick cooker, and our stoneware. Those are your five categories of power tools. And if you don't know what to say about those power tools, you need to go on to the training and resource tab, go down to product training and look up each of those five categories, listen to the video and pull out a one sentence blurb about what you would say about them. So I'm gonna give you my two cents. You can use my words, but I recommend that you make it your own. And it's okay to say the same thing again and again. I joke all the time when I have people that come back to my shows. Sometimes I have new consultants and they're like, it's the same people, they're going to get bored with me. I said, no, it's the same people. And they're going to see that your job is so easy that once they memorize what to say, their job is just routine and that they're going to be a great recruit lead for you because they don't have to reinvent the wheel every single show. So if you've been to a show with me, two, two or three of my shows, then you've been to my shows. You, you know what I'm going to say about a knife. If you watch my YouTube channel, you're going to know what I say. So I, I pick up a knife and I raise my hand. Anybody here own a professional knife? Great. Do you own Wusthof, Hinkles? What do you own? Cutco? Oh, awesome. Did you know that if you have a Wusthof, um, uh, I mean, a Hinkle knife, they have this little guy with a, a staff, and he's like a little native guy on him. I say that you need to have three or more men standing on your knife for your knife to be even into the range of high quality to professional. And five, I think, is the most you can get. Most people I've met have one or two people on their knife. Some of them have had three. Nobody's had more than three. So the grade of the knife will depend on the cost of the knife. So I will tell them our knives are made with German steel. German steel is the best steel to make a knife out of because it can be pounded to a finer tip and it starts sharper and stays sharper. I then pull out our chef's knife and I wave it like a flag and I go, I'm waving this like a flag because I'm tooting on my own horn. Pampered Chef just got an award with this knife. It won an award for Start Sharper, Stay Sharper against Wusthof, Cutco, Hinkles, and all other knives in its class. We are very proud of this knife. And then I take the sheath off of it and I talk about how it has two logos on it and that the logos show you how to hold the knife. I said a lot of us hold our knives back on the shaft. You want to choke up on it and pinch the metal of the knife. 
I show them how to hold the knife. Our, our job is to consult. They're at a cooking class. We want them to learn something at the cooking class. So I teach them to how to properly hold a knife. I joke at my shows that you use your loser fingers so you don't lose a finger and you pinch the blade with these. Before Pampered Chef so nicely put on the logos on where to put your fingers, that's how I taught people how to pinch the blade. And so I show them how to hold it. Then I explain to them on a chef's knife and on a utility knife that has a curve to it, you do what's called landing the plane. You come down and forward, down and forward, and I show them this motion a few times. And then I say, and if you hold the celery with one hand and you keep the tip on the board and you're just making this motion, you can push the celery in with your left hand as you're doing this with your right hand and you look like, ta-da, Rachel Ray. So I explain all that to them. They all laugh because I'm pretty excited that I look like Rachel Ray. And then um, I explain that a Santuco knife is flatter on the bottom, has the pocketed divot holes, and that's great for using for a zucchini, summer squash, and potatoes or other things that normally stick to your blade and it's to help the air pockets or to help it come off the blade easier. And I explain because it's flatter on the bottom, think of a choo-choo train and it kind of goes back and forth on a choo-choo train track, not up and down like this. So I explain those things, now your knife talk is done. What do you say about a rock crock? Here's what I say. A rock crock is like a piece of cookware that married a piece of stoneware and had a baby. This is your little black dress of the kitchen that will take you everywhere. Everybody needs a little black dress that you can dress up or dress down, add some bling to it, and you literally, it'll be a staple in your uh, wardrobe. Well, this little black dress will be a staple in your kitchen. You can use it on a stove top, gas or electric. It can be on a flat top uh, electric or a coil electric stove. You can use it in the oven. You can use it under a broiler, so you can make, French onion soup. You can do a, you can start your beef stew on the stove top and stick it into the oven. You can start an egg uh, bake or a souffle and put it into the oven. You can put it in the dishwasher. You can put it in the microwave. I always raise my hand. Anybody here own the La Creuset heavy cast iron Dutch ovens? They are beautiful, but you need the Incredible Hulk to get it out of the oven when it is chock full of food. So we don't want that. This is much lighter and easier. Plus, Cast iron does not go in the microwave. So this literally is your one pot cooking. You're going to start your beef stew on the stove top. You're gonna to brown your meat after you flour and salt and pepper it. You're gonna add your other ingredients. It's gonna get on those burnt on bits off the bottom that gives it the depth of flavor that's in a really good beef stew. You're gonna stick it into the oven or as every black dress needs a pair of pearls or some type of bling bling necklace to go with it, this little black dress has a slow cooker stand that they just came out with. So that's our bling that goes with this. Your, your Dutch oven can become a, your rock crock can become a crock pot by simply starting it on the stovetop and moving it right into the same base. So you don't have to switch pans. You can serve dinner in it. You can keep a fondue warm in it. You could do a chocolate ganache in it and do a dipping wine cheese and chocolate show. From there, you can then put it into the refrigerator with the cover on it. Then your husband can take it out the next day, put it into the microwave, microwave it, eat from the bowl and put the whole darn thing into the dishwasher. It is literally one pot cooking. So I am explaining to them how this would be used in their home with a story. And I'm using beef stew as an example, or you could use mac and cheese as an example, where you boil the pasta in it, then you make your roux in the bottom. You have to explain and make word pictures about the food that you're cooking so that they can imagine it in their kitchen. What do I say about our professional cookware? I say... It's been 10 years since Pampered Chef has redesigned our knives and our cookware, and without a doubt, this cookware is the best cookware I have ever had, and I have had all three of Pampered Chef's cookware, and I have uh, had other name brand cookware, and this is phenomenal. Is everybody listening up? Because you want to know why. It has no PFOAs. And some of you might be saying, what is a PFOA? Well, that's the bad stuff that's in Teflon that everybody's freaked out about. Pamper Chef has come up with a way to create a beautiful nonstick coating that doesn't have that dangerous chemical in it. Now, if you have nonstick cookware at home, I can guarantee you that you cannot use it past medium high heat and you cannot use metal utensils in it or the nonstick is going to be ruined over a period of time. This nonstick can be used on high heat. You can use metal utensils in it. You can put this in the dishwasher. 
It has no rivets on the bottom edge so that when you're cooking um, an egg, you can just wipe out the whole inside. And the best part is, and I show them and I pull the handle off, the handles are detachable. I put the handle inside and I say for easy storage for those of you who don't have a lot of cabinet space. This literally is husband and child safe. This is the last piece of cookware you will ever need to buy. It is 100% guaranteed. It's a lifetime warranty. And you think this is amazing? And then I pull out my nonstick stainless steel skillet. I go, here is stainless steel. When you need to make a caramelized onion or you need to have a, um, uh, a uh, fond that is the burnt on bits at the bottom of a dish that make it feel like you've got a nice depth of flavor. This is, can create a fond, but the cleanup is just as easy. It's a sponge to wash this out. Plus, this is stainless steel. For all of you that have induction ovens, we now finally have a nonstick for you too. This will change your life. Then you're going to look at the person who has the host special announcer and you're going to go, and she's going to go, oh, oh, yes. And you can get that for only $84 instead of $210 when you have Tammy come and do a show at, her, at your house. Or you can do a virtual Facebook party. And you go, thank you for that announcement. An extra point for you. You did such a good job. And everybody laughs because you were the one that prompted her. Then you're going to um, talk about, um, let's see, knives, cookware, rock, crock, stoneware. How many of you guys own stoneware out there? Raise your hand. Awesome, awesome. Did you know that stoneware was the very first Pampered Chef item that we have um, that Doris Christopher brought to her very first show 38 years ago, October 15th. So by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I am looking to book a show on October 15th because it is our anniversary and they want all of us to have a show on the 15th. So if you choose the 15th as your date with me, I'll have a bonus gift for you. So. In addition to that, my director is giving a bonus out to one of the hostesses on the 15th. So she is going to call a show during the show time and see if the show is actually going on. And if it's going on, she's going to give a bonus gift to the hostess as well. So definitely you want to get on my calendar for the 15th. So, um, uh, stoneware. So there are three different types of stoneware that we carry now. We carry the unglazed stoneware. So you said that you had a piece of stoneware, Johnny. Tell me, what stone do you have? Oh, I have the pizza stone. Oh, do you have the old pizza stone that has the metal rack to it? Or do you have the new one that has the handles to it? Or do you have the new one that has the glaze to it? It's going to go, uh, I have the old one with the metal rack. I'm um, great. I have one of those too. I said it was kind of a pain. I never did use the metal rack to get the stone in and out. I just used my pot holders and they got all yucky. But now our pot holders aren't cloth, they're silicone, so you can just rub them under the sink just like you're washing your hands. So now I'm cross selling the pot holders with the stoneware. You don't have to have them to sell them, you just talk about them. And then you're gonna say, um, so our stoneware, why is stoneware so great? Well, brick oven pizzas are fabulous for this reason. They're made with brick or terracotta. Moisture goes through our stoneware and it evaporates, making breaded products rise better, crisp up better. So any leftover Chinese food, chicken nuggets, tater tots, anything that is breaded and fried needs to go on a stone in an oven, not in a microwave if you want it to be crunchy and crispy like the day you brought it home from the restaurant. In addition to that, and I pull out my cell phone, and anybody who is watching this video, if you want this video, you need to text me, Sue Moulton at 603-229-2826 and ask for my loaf pan photo. It is a picture of a metal pan and a stoneware loaf pan with a loaf of bread. Same oven, same dough, same day. One is like this big, the other one is much bigger. It shows the difference between cooking in stoneware and cooking in metal. Any time you are talking about stoneware, you wanna make sure that people understand uh, when you're cooking things like biscuits or crescent rolls at Thanksgiving and you put crescent rolls on a stone, whatever is happening on the top of the cover is exactly what's happening on the bottom of your, I mean, top of your uh, crescent roll is exactly what's happening on the bottom of your crescent roll. Meaning that if you, um, if you have it nice and brown on the top, you know that you haven't burnt the bottoms. If you have a metal sheet pan, you are hovering and you are hovering and you're peeking and you're peeking and you're like almost done. Oh, they still look gooey. Oh, they're done. The bottoms are burnt. So you don't want to have that. You cannot burn on stoneware. So 
not all stoneware is created equal. I had a customer at one of my shows that bought a pizza stone from the Christmas tree shop and on the bottom of the stone, it said for pizza only. She proceeded to, buy, um, to cook uh, fatty foods in it. Um, uh, one of her stones, she had edges on it and she cooked bacon in it. Like I cook bacon in my stoneware all the time. Her oven caught on fire. The moisture and the fats went through the stone dripped out and caught it on fire because their stones were not kilned at the high 2000 degree temperature that ours are. Their pores weren't correct. Plus you need to make sure that they are made in the United States. Ours are 99.9% .9 lead free. You do not want to be cooking on stoneware made from China because who knows what chemicals you are putting into your body from that. So we also carry a line of glazed stoneware for all of you who cook lasagnas and you don't like it when the lasagna boils over and then it makes your stoneware all yucky colored. You can actually wash the outside part of your um, 9 by 13 baker and it'll be beautiful. And so it, it is um, oven to table beautiful. We also have 100% glazed stoneware where it's glazed on the inside and the outside and that is called our entertaining um, collection. We have two platters, a large bowl, and some smaller bowls. Can somebody find what page that's on and give it a shout out to me? The first person to find what page that's on is going to get X number of points. So now your guests are looking through the catalog. Somebody's going to shout it out. You're going to say, everybody turn to that page. Now you're going to be able to see all the stoneware. Great, Sarah, you get three points. Okay, stoneware, cookware, knives, rock crock, what have I missed? Oh, quick cooker. So our newest power tool that we got is actually an appliance, kind of like a dishwasher or a refrigerator. It's something that you'll use so often into your kitchen and it will save you so much time and money. How many of you guys own a pressure cooker at home, something like an Instapot or something like that? This is exactly that same kind of thing, but better. Pampered Chef said at our national conference that it is not always best to be first on the market with something, and I absolutely agree. And why is that? Because we could improve on the things that people didn't like about previous models and selections. Paper Chef added a lot more safety mechanisms into our quick cooker pressure cooker. So the releasing of pressure is way back where you push the handle versus having to touch where the steam comes out. There's no chance that you're going to burn yourself with steam. There's logos that show you which direction the steam will be escaping the machine with it. There are buttons on it that will not let you open the cover if it's under pressure. Um, and it has extra buttons. So this is a 16 in one cooker. You can do beans, you could do rice, you can do chicken, pork, um, you can do desserts. I've done the cheesecake twice now and if I do it anymore, I'm gonna gain another four pounds. So we have to stop with that. But you can do cheesecake by putting all the ingredients together, putting it in and pushing start. My favorite is how many of you guys come home from work and you are thinking, what are we gonna have for dinner? And you realize that you have not defrosted anything, right? Raise your hand. All right, you're in good company because that is me all the time. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take frozen chicken breast and you're gonna stick it in this quick cooker and you're gonna take a can of salsa or a jar of salsa and you're gonna dump it on top. You need at least one cup of liquid. So the salsa counts as liquid. You can put a cup of water in, you can put pesto in, you name it. Um, I had a girlfriend that did chicken, a uh, couple breasts of chicken, she did pesto, she put the tripod stand on top of it, and then she put um, spaghetti squash in there, and then turned the cover on, turn it to the chicken button, push start, and walked away. It will come up to pressure. Once it comes up to pressure, it will cook. When it's done cooking, it'll release the pressure slowly, or you can push the button. With meats, I recommend that you let it come uh, depressurize for 10 minutes by itself before you push the button. And then voila, you scoop your uh, spaghetti squash out of that, you've got your chicken in the bottom, everything is cooked beautifully. So if you are the type of person that does not plan for dinner, that would be me, um, and you just wake up and you're like, crap, I have to feed people in an hour, this is the tool for you. This is an appliance that will save you so much time and you'll leave it out because you'll use it so often. Ding, ding, now our recipe is just beeped in the microwave, it is let the stove, whatever. So you're gonna say, all right, everybody, I want you to come around, um, I'm gonna take out our donuts, if uh, Tracy's doing a donut recipe, and you guys are gonna put them out on the cooling rack, and you're gonna let them cool for a couple minutes. At that point, you might be melting chocolate, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do cinnamon sugar, you're gonna put um, wax paper beneath the cooling rack so that the um, cinnamon sugar will drop down onto the wax paper, and not all over the counter. 
Um, you can drizzle chocolate with the chocolate drizzle, or you can use the silicone prep bowls, and you can microwave them for 30 seconds at a time until it's melted. Um, you can put jimmies, you can chop nuts on it, whatever it is that you're putting on it. If, um, if you're only doing one recipe, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna tell everybody, all right, everybody, I want you to go ahead and grab your food, grab your catalogs, and come back and grab a bite to eat because I'm just gonna wrap everything up. I'm gonna tell you about um, the specials. Everybody that has an announcement is going to make their announcement one more time. And um, I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna do checkout. So they get their food, they get their drinks, they all get back together. Um, if you haven't finished going around the room asking people their favorite products, you might just quickly you know, finish up with some of those guests. If you don't make it all the way around, it is completely fine. Um, at that point, you're going to say something like, all right, announcers, it's your turn to do your final announcements. They go around guest special, host special, and recruiting promotion. Um, you're gonna say, okay, at this point, I want to give you guys an opportunity to learn a little bit more about what I do. And I do the question and answer. There are three different ways that you can get information out about the business opportunity. I do the ask me anything you wanted to know about the Pampered Chef business and you get 10 tickets into the door prize for doing that. There are questions that you can print out from our website and I will point you to those. And they're also on our team page. And they ask the questions like, um, is there a certain number of show minimums? Can you earn a car? Um, what is the commission rate? How do you get trained? They're all the questions that people normally ask, um, and there are answers for them for you as well. If that is too threatening for you, you're too nervous about talking about that and offending questions, and I always joke, if you don't know a question, I'm like, 25 points for you, I have no idea, I will get back to you with the answer on that. Who's got the next question? So don't panic, you don't have to know it all. And what's so great about that is other people are gonna look at you and go, oh my God, if she can do this, I totally can do this. Um, and so um, the other thing is called a Y bag. So you might grab a little, you know, cute little bag um, and you're gonna put things in there. Like, why did you start Pampered Chef? So maybe you pull out one of those fake plastic credit cards that you get in the mail when Mer American Express is trying to get you to open a card. And you go, why do you think this is in here? And they go, because you wanted to pay off credit cards. You're like, yes, good point, you get two points. And then I pulled out um, a little charm of a shoe. And I'm like, why do you think this is in here? And they're like, because you like shoes? I'm like, yes, I have a shoe fetish. Yes, you get two points. Then I pulled out a little uh, cruise ship because the first year I started Pampered Chef full time, I wanted to go on a Spain, France, and Italy Mediterranean cruise for free with Pampered Chef. So I pulled that out and I said, why do you think this is in here? And they're like, you like to cruise? I said, I don't know, haven't been yet, but I'm gonna earn my first free cruise with Pampered Chef. So you pull things out, maybe it's to pay off debt. So maybe you have a little car, I wanna pay off my car, or maybe you have a car because I wanna buy this Ferrari, or you have a little house or a picture of a house or a car. Just put some things in the bag that represent why you got started. The third way that you can talk about the business opportunity if those first two are not appealing to you is called a sincere recruiting statement. And it sounds something like this. You know, I don't know whether you guys went to bed last night worrying about whether you can pay your mortgage. Or maybe you got up and you drove to work and you dropped your baby off at daycare and cried all the way back to the office because you really want to be a stay-at-home mom. Or maybe you're the stay-at-home mom and would just like some adult interaction and would like to get appreciated for something other than cleaning up spit up. Or maybe you have student loans for yourself or for your kids that you are just wishing that you could pay off quicker. Could be a car payment, it could be a mani and a petty, it could just be that you would like a free vacation. For those of you who might be interested in going to Disney, maybe it's you would like to take a family of four to Disney, all expense paid with Pampered Shop. I don't know why you might be interested in the business. All I can do is tell you why I started Pampered Chef. Then you give a two sentence statement. I started Pampered Chef for cute shoes 15 years ago because I was the stay at home mom that had no extra money. So I needed extra money to buy cute shoes that did not come out of the running budget and we called it, is it necessary money? 15 years later, fast forward, I buy as many cute shoes as I really want. I've been on top level trip vacations every year. So you're just gonna give your story. I'm looking to earn a trip to Disney. I wanna take my kids and grandkids with me. Whatever your story is, after you do the sincere recruiting statement. The sincere recruiting statement encapsulates the number five reasons that people do Pampered Chef. They, want to quit their regular job or their stay-at-home moms and need extra money. 
they want to pay for a car, dance lessons, piano lessons, whatever, for their children. They want to pay off student loans, maybe they want to save for retirement. These are common reasons that people pick up extra jobs. 50% of Americans say that they need extra money. 60% of Americans have said that they've considered owning their own business. And in the state of New Hampshire, we have the highest student debt ratio for student loans. So the cost for somebody to stick two kids into daycare if they are under the age of like four is like $1,200 a month. That is ridiculous, the amount of money that it costs to do that. So for the first five years of these kids' lives, people need to earn extra income until they are into school full time. So there are lots of reasons why people would do Pampered Chef part-time, full-time, or career time, and you just need to let them know that that's an option. Once you've done your sincere recruiting statement, you just say, I have these little brochures for you. Um, they are called Make Your Everyday Better, and if this is something that you have considered or you know somebody that could use some extra income this holiday to maybe have a debt-free holiday, I would love to give you one of these brochures and to just follow up and answer any questions for you. It's very non-threatening. We are not forcing people to join Pampered Chef. We just want to see if it's a good fit. At that point, then you're going to say, thank you everybody for your attention. Let me tell you how checkout's going to go. I am going to take my dishes and soak them in the sink over here. And you're going to take all your dishes except for your knives and you're going to stick them in a warm soapy sink of water. You're going to put anything that's sharp on the side of the sink because I have learned somebody on Pamper Chef, one of the guys told me that women cannot stand to see a sink of dirty dishes. So somebody will come and do your dishes for you, which will help you get out of the hostess's house at a decent time. So definitely do that. Um, so then you're going to say, I'm going to just soak my dishes over here. I want to tell you that I will be set up right here in the living room, right here in the kitchen, wherever to help you with your orders. You're going to explain what express checkout is so that they can do their own checkout themselves with their six digit code. And then you're going to talk about the rounding up for feeding America. Please don't leave this part out of your show. At the end of your order form, ladies and gentlemen, you will find this little heart. This heart is for Feeding America. Many of your neighbors um, need extra income, I mean, need extra food, and um, the amount of people that go to bed food insecure, meaning they are hungry when they go to bed, is outstanding. It is just unbelievable. So at Christmas time, people think of the food bank, but Feeding America thinks of them year round. For every $2 you donate, 22 meals goes to the local food bank supported by Feeding America. I will be asking you at checkout if you would like to round your, your order to the nearest dollar or whether you would like to donate $2 or more. It is unlimited. If you want to give 5 or 10 that is fine as well. So you can just let me know what you want your final amount to be. Thank you so much for being a great audience. Remember, if you would like to host a show, repeat the bonuses, the specials, your themes, and then just clear your stuff. So that is how a show goes from beginning to end. Um, and then you're going to do full service checkout. Full service checkout is a part of the show that when I started implementing it regularly, totally changed my business. Talking about bookings during the show, or oh, I forgot to talk about that, talking about recruiting during the show and doing full service checkout. At some point during your show, I usually ask everybody to turn to the inside back cover or the outside back cover, depending upon the catalog, and take a peek at the host benefit for hosting a show. I again raise my hand and I ask them, is there anybody here who has ever hosted a Pampered Chef show before? Raise your hand. And if they do, you know that they are most likely to host a Pampered Chef show with you. You're gonna say, tell me, did you get tons of free and half price products when you hosted? They're going to say yes. You're gonna say, would you recommend it to the others in the room? They're gonna say yes. Then you're gonna say, so on the back cover of the catalog, tell me if you do a $1,200 show, how much in free products will you earn? They are gonna say $265 and you're gonna say, yes, $265. How many half price items or sets? They're gonna say five. You're gonna say yes. You can choose from these sets that are on the back cover but you don't have to. If you would just like to get the quick cooker at half price, you can. And in addition to free, in addition to half price, you get a discount. Can somebody shout out the discount? 30%, great, give yourself five points. 
Okay, and what is the bonus for October? And you go, and you look at the lady who's got the October host bonus. And she goes, oh, oh, it's the blah, blah, blah. And you go, yes, excellent. Give yourself another point for making that announcement again. You've overfilled your, your quota. And then um, you just say, I offer fun theme shows. I do wine, cheese, and chocolate, Mexican and margaritas, one pot meals, fast, fresh weeknight meals, you name it. If you wanna do vegan, vegetarian, Whole30, you name it, I can curtail a recipe to you and your friends. We could get together, we could use different products, different tools to make a new recipe. Plus you get to fill your kitchen with a free shopping spree from Pampered Chef. And our host is here today, we'll be able to get a half price item at that future show. So, you point to the best friend or the sister. Carol, when you host your show in October, you're gonna get half price. Which of these four items would you choose? The quick cooker? I would too. So she's gonna get the quick cooker for 60% uh, off. Your friend uh, Tammy here is gonna get a half price item at your show. And then Georgia, how about you? When you host your show in November, maybe we do an easy appetizers, like holiday appetizers type theme show for you. What would you wanna get for your half price item? Oh, you really like the entertaining setter. That would be great. We'll do the entertaining platters. I'll bring all the entertaining gear when we come to your show, blah, 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 blah. So you're pointing out a couple people and you're saying October, November, December, and you're offering different theme shows. Um, because you want to have mentioned it to them at least once, in their head, they're probably thinking, no, I'm not gonna host a show. Then when we come to checkout, you sit down and I always tell people, I'd like you to come one at a time so I can give you my full service checkout and my full attention. I will have the person go back into the other room and call next when I'm ready. Because I don't want people lining up, waiting for me. Go have a drink, visit with your friends, and I'll be with you. Raise your hand and then say, is there anybody here that needs to leave right away? You've got young kids, you need to get out of here because I want to make sure I take you first. There's always somebody who shoots their hand up. You're all right, you're first, come with me. So you sit down and you go through full service checkout. You start with thanking them, making a sincere compliment. You were so engaging tonight. You asked a lot of really good questions. You were very helpful. Your daughter was adorable. I love your shoes, whatever. Make it sincere. Make it something that you can connect with the person. You're going to then talk to them about the business opportunity first, not hosting a show. So you're gonna say, Tammy, did you have a good time tonight? Oh yes, I had a great time. I would love to have you on my team. Have you ever considered doing something like Pampered Chef to earn extra income? Oh no, I could never do this. Really, tell me why. Oh, I'm not outgoing, I'm not a people person, I work two jobs, I'm too busy. Ask more questions at that point. This is what I wanna hear from you. When they say I'm too busy, you need to say, so tell me what you're busy doing. Because they may actually be too busy at the time, but you wanna know. And the reason I tell this to my team members is I had a lady who was too busy and I asked her if she'd be interested in um, hosting a show, like doing a, um, I think it was Mexican and Margarita show. And she said, no, I really am too busy. I coach soccer. I'm on a soccer team and I run the entire soccer program for my town. She is busy. So immediately, now that I know what she's busy doing and I know what she's passionate about, I asked her if she'd like to do a fundraiser for the Community Center Soccer League. And she said yes. So she had said she was too busy twice to me prior, but once I understood how I could meet her need, she was willing to spend time to do a two-week fundraiser when she wasn't willing to spend time to do a two-hour show because it was something that mattered to her. So it's not what we want, it's how we can meet their needs. And if you're looking at it in, how can I serve you? Do you need recipes? Do you need to have a cooking class? Do you have, oh my gosh, you know, I'm gonna have a baby. We should do a freezer meal workshop and get a bunch of meals prepped for you so that you can just throw them in a crock pot after the baby's born. Oh, I'm going into surgery. We should teach you how to do a quick cooker class so you're friends and you can do meals fast. So find out how to meet their need. After you ask them about the business opportunity, 99% of the people are going to say no. We are looking for the 0.1% of the people that say, I've considered it, but there are always objections. Very few people will sign at your show, but it does happen. You want to be having a follow-up conversation with them. So you're going to say, would it be all right if I give you some information about the business opportunity and follow up with you tomorrow? I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Maybe you can go home and talk to your husband. He might have some questions. 
and we'll have a three-way call with my friend Sue. She's the one that trains me. She can answer any question that I can't answer, and then we have a three-way call. After the business opportunity, you offer theme shows. Do you think you and your friends would be more interested in the fast, fresh weeknight meals, the one pot cooking, or Mexican and margarita show? That is not a yes or no question. It's a multiple choice question. So now they have to go, oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know even know if I could do a show. Ah, ah, ah. And you go, oh, why not? Didn't you have a good time tonight? And they say, well, yeah, I did, but I'm just too busy. Tell me, what are you busy doing? You're going to find out. And then you figure it out. Like one lady said, she had her daughter's wedding in two weeks. I'm like, you are definitely too busy. How about I give you a call after the wedding? She said, that'd be great. What's your daughter's name? When's the wedding? You write notes on your order form so that you can follow up with her afterwards. Hey, Carol, how was your daughter Dawn's wedding? Did everything go off like, a, you know, without a hitch? I'm so looking forward to it. Now, if her wedding is months out, you're going to offer a bridal shower or a bridal registry. This is why it's important to get to know your guests that are there. You want, you need to be a detective because the difference between a good Pampered Chef consultant and a great Pampered Chef consultant is the connection you have with your customers. And you want to build lifelong customers, okay? You want to really be interested in them so that when you see something great happen on their page, like their son goes into the military or whatever, you know that his name is Aaron or his name is Steven and you know something about him. So that when you comment on their Facebook page, they actually know who you are. So you need to be a person and not just a salesperson to them. After they say no to the recruiting and no to the booking, you're going to ask, well, what about a virtual Facebook party? You don't even have to have people come to your house. You don't have to clean. We can do it all online. You still earn all the same free half price and discounted benefits for a virtual party. If they say no to that, I usually laugh and go, all right, I promise. Last question. Do you have anybody that you could introduce me to that might be getting married um, or needing a fundraiser? We do fundraisers and bridal showers and bridal registries. And if they say no, I say, okay, no problem. And you can give them this uh, recruiting brochure and you can say, why don't you keep this where you keep your bills? And if you ever have more month than money, give me a call. I'd be happy to help you or a friend out. Then you go to their order. You enter their order in your mobile app. You make sure that you cross sell. If they're ordering knives, you ask if they've got good cutting boards, um, you know, that kind of stuff. If they're ordering a brownie pan, you make sure that they have the nylon spatula so they don't scratch the brownie pan, those type of things. And then you thank them for their order and you let them know that you'll be following up with them in a couple of weeks to make sure that they got their orders. And then we'll do a training on customer care, the 222.